In today's video, we're going to talk about the Skagway, Alaska, where it is, uh, what there is to do there, and a little bit of its history. That's coming right after this. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Ken Edmonds, and on this channel, I help people that travel with difficulties travel better, avoid the pitfalls, and I also share information for their friends and families as well. So the first question is, where's Skagway? Skagway sits at the, the, the northern point in the Inside Passage. And the Inside Passage is basically the area in southeast Alaska where ships can travel uh, without going out into the Gulf of Alaska. They're basically protected by a row of uh, barrier islands, and so it makes a much more comfortable journey than if you had to go out and sail uh, on the outside. Uh, on this slide, you can see that Skagway sits at the end of this long channel, and that channel is actually called the Lynn Canal, and it is one of the deepest uh, fjords in North America. It was carved by a glacier, and so it's interesting that even when your ship's docked uh, right up against the mountain, in Skagway that there's still uh, hundreds of feet of water below the ship because the, the sides are almost vertical. As we look at this next slide, what you can see is, is that Skagway is a long, narrow town. And when I say long, it's not hugely long. It's a very small town. It's really only uh, home to between 900 and 1,000 people year round. Now in the summer, the population grows significantly uh, as uh, workers come in to help with taking care of the cruise passengers. And when the harbor's full of ships, uh, the population can go from, let's say, uh, 1,500 people to uh, probably 10,000 people. Skagway is actually the uh, second busiest port in Alaska. So the question comes up, why is Skagway here? And it has to do with the Klondike Gold Rush. The miners had to pack in about a thousand pounds of food and gear with them to go into the Yukon Territory to, to get to the gold fields in the Klondike. And they were looking, obviously, for the shortest, easiest way to get there. Most of the prospectors were traveling in from the lower 48. And so they were looking for the closest, easiest ports to get in to the gold fields. And those two ports were Daia and Skagway. Now, there's nothing left of Daia except some ruins. But Skagway survived. The absolute shortest passage for the miners uh, from the coast up into the uh, Yukon Territory was uh, the Chilkoot Trail, which uh, headed up out of Daia. The problem with the Chilkoot Trail was that it was steep and they couldn't use animals to pack equipment in. So the miners, uh, when they went in from Daia, they would pack uh, as much as they could carry up part way, go back and get more and make a couple of trips till they got all of their gear to a spot. And then they'd move up to like to the next level. And this was a real challenge for the miners. The, this picture uh, shows two views of the Chilkoot Trail and this is an area on the trail that's called the Golden Staircase. In the, uh, the picture with the miners uh, going up it, you'll notice that it's winter and they literally carved steps into the snow and ice so that they could climb easily. Now you can see in the modern day, uh, we've got a hiker uh, climbing up uh, the same area and without the steps and you can see the challenges that would exist. Now imagine, again, you have to carry a thousand pounds of gear up that hill. So because of that, there was a need for a different route. As I mentioned, that was the route that went in from Daia. The route that went in from Skagway actually uh, went up what's called White Pass, and that was a much easier climb. They could use animals. Uh, however, it was very hard on the animals. In fact, uh, it became known as the Dead Horse Trail because uh, the uh, novice uh, Miners were trying to pack too much on the animals and pushing them too hard and a lot died in the process. It was significantly farther, but it was so much easier 
that both routes uh, were popular uh, just for different reasons. So the question of the day, have you been to Skagway? And if so, what did you do there? I need you to put an answer down in the comments below. Join in the discussion. Thanks. So in this map, uh, what you see is the downtown area of Skagway. And the area that is of interest to the tourists really is uh, basically two blocks wide and six blocks deep. As I said, it's a very small town. It's very easily walkable. One of the things about it that is nice, it's uh, basically an entirely flat town and uh, there are ramps available on the, most of the sidewalks. So it works well for those that are traveling with a wheelchair or, or with a scooter. This is a satellite view of the port in Skagway. And from uh, above, we can see that there are currently three ships tied up. There is space for uh, another ship uh, to dock so they, they can dock at least four ships. And most days, if you go to Skagway on a cruise, you're going to wind up uh, docking. Uh, occasionally, if they get very busy, they'll have to tender in. But for the most part, you can expect to dock in Skagway, which again makes it much easier for those that have mobility challenges. So if you're heading out from the port area in Skagway, uh, this is what the road looks like. Again, like I said, it's nice and flat, and there is uh, transportation available. Most everybody will just walk because everything is so close. In this next picture, we've gotten a little closer to town, and on the right, what you see is Centennial Park, and there's a, a statue there, and so it's a great place to get a picture. And just past it, uh, that red object you see, uh, we'll get a little better look in a few minutes, but is a rotary snow plow that was used to keep the snow off the tracks so that the uh, trains could make their way up White Pass. This view, we're looking down the Broadway toward town. We're about even with the statues at Centennial Park. You can see a little better view of the rotary snow plow. And Broadway is the main thoroughfare in uh, Skagway. Uh, and then if you're getting value from this, do me a favor. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And you're going to want to hit the notify bell as well. That way, when I release new videos, you'll get a notification. And I do release at least one new video every week. So we're going to talk a little bit about the history of Skagway, and then we'll go into what there is to see and do in Skagway. And Skagway got its start when Captain Moore, uh, with some native guides, found a pass uh, that became White Pass. This was a much easier uh, trek into the Yukon than the Chilkoot Trail from Diem. And so he recognized the, the potential value of that property, and he decided to claim uh, 160 acres at the uh, foothills of the mountains there at the bay. Nine years later, in 1896, uh, they found gold uh, in the Klondike. And as word of that got out, people started uh, packing their bags, and headed toward the Klondike. In 1897, just a year later, uh, the there were hundreds of uh, prospectors arrived and the uh, White Pass Trail opened uh, for people to travel in to uh, the Yukon and then on down to the Gold Rush area in the Klondike. By 1898, Skagway's population had exploded. Uh, it had gone from basically one family living there to between eight and 10,000 people living there. The town uh, was a rough frontier town. Um, it was filled with uh, saloons, bordellos, and uh, gambling halls, and your occasional gunfight. In the early spring of 1898, uh, the, the White Pass Railroad uh, started to be organized. And in May, they started construction, and by July, and they had enough train uh, track laid that the first train uh, trip went four miles out of town. So not a lot, but from, again, from the spring until uh, July, they had gotten four miles of track laid and they had equipment arriving and in place. And by February of the following year, uh, 1899, the uh, train was able to reach the summit of White Pass. In July of 1899, the railroad reached Lake Bennett. And that was important because Lake Bennett was uh, where 
the miners would build boats or buy boats and sail down uh, the Yukon River till they got to the Klondike. So that provided them easy transportation once they got to Lake Bennett. And the train had transformed what had been a multi-day uh, excruciating trip into a three-hour train ride. 1899 was really the last uh, real year of the Klondike Gold Rush. Uh, about that time, gold was found in Nome, and all the uh, people that were looking for gold were now, in, instead of heading in to the Klondike, were heading to Nome, and they were going uh, via ship to get to Nome. The result of that was the town of Skagway started to shrink in size. And by 1900, it was down to just a little over 3,000 inhabitants. It's interesting that Skagway was the first incorporated city in the state of Alaska. It beat Juneau by one day. And in 1900, they completed the White Pass Railway all, all the way from Skagway to Whitehorse. If you're getting value from this video, and I hope you are, I need you to do me a favor. Please hit the like button. Makes me feel good when people like the videos. Much of Skagway is part of what's called the Klondike Gold Rush Historical Park. This is a National Historic District and it comprises of four units. The first unit is actually not in Skagway. It's in Seattle and this is because Seattle was where the miners uh, would start from. If you're planning a cruise to Alaska that's going to stop in Skagway and you're interested, uh, you can see the uh, Visitor Center in uh, Seattle, which is the jumping off point for the prospectors that were headed toward the Klondike. When you get into Skagway, about half of the downtown area, six blocks, is part of that historical park. And so you'll get a chance to see a lot of buildings and a lot of uh, history in Skagway. In fact, you could say that a lot of the activities in Skagway are focused on its history. When we think about uh, the historical park and the historical area of Skagway, the National Park Service owns 14 buildings there. Uh, some of them are used as museums. Uh, one is the Park uh, Visitor Center. Some are, are restored buildings that are uh, on lease to tenants, and some are buildings that they're still waiting to restore. The final two units uh, that make up this historical park are the Chilcote Trail, which is, uh, interestingly enough, the world's longest museum. The trail is 33 miles up to Lake Bennett, and it is a part of the museum. And then also there is, uh, the last piece is, uh, there's some remnant pieces that you can hike of the uh, White Pass Trail. So we're gonna take a look at a few of the historical buildings. Uh, I'm gonna do another video later on that'll be a kind of a walking tour of Skagway, and then we'll have a chance to look at and talk more about all of these buildings. The, the first building we're gonna take a look at is the old White Pass Railway Station. At that point in time, the train actually went up Broadway, and so uh, the train station's right there, and. Uh, this also now serves as the visitor center for uh, the National Park Service. So it's uh, just as you come into town on the right side, you're, you're actually wanting, gonna wanna stop there and that's a good place to get your visit to Skagway started because they'll have maps, they have tours, they have quite a few things that are there to look at and you can get a, a better feel for what there is you might wanna take a look at. Uh, this uh, building is called the Martin Eichen, uh House and he was, uh, he formed the first streetcar company in Skagway. And the, this house, he's, uh, you could say he was kind of the founder of the tourism business too, because he sold tours from this house. And this house uh, belongs to the Park Service, and it's one of those places that you can stop and visit uh, while you're walking around in Skagway. This is another uh, building that had been restored by the Park Service. Uh, it originally started out as a uh, Peniel mission. Um, now the Park Service uses it as dormitory space uh, for their seasonal workers that come to Skagway during the, the season. Uh, this is the oldest building the Park Service owns in Skagway and they don't know exactly when it was built but it, by 1897 it shows up in a photograph. 
So it's one of the older buildings in Skagway, and it's, uh, it hasn't been restored. It's kind of still the shape it was in, uh, and the Park Service is waiting to like, fund re- restoration of that building. Started life as a cigar store. It's done a lot of other things. I thought this was an interesting photograph because it shows the view down Broadway in May of 1898 and then a much more recent uh, picture of that same vantage point. So it's kind of interesting, the difference and some of the similarities. Uh, This last photo is the White Pass Railway. I thought this was kind of interesting, too, because that they're obviously in the process of clearing snow as they're trying to make their way up uh, toward the summit. Uh, this was evidently before they got the rotary snowplow. So what is there to do when you get to Skagway? Well, the number one attraction in Skagway is the Wab Pass Railway. And it is supposed to be an amazing journey. I, I haven't had a chance yet to take the railway. The two times we've been to Skagway, we've driven in to the Yukon Territory. So it's on my list for our next visit. The Probably the second most popular attraction is uh, the history that's available in Skagway. There are seven museums, uh, multiple reenactments of uh, things that you could see. So uh, if you're into history, this is a great choice in Skagway. For a lot of people, uh, another great choice is shopping. There are numerous stores in town that uh, are based uh, there in Skagway or in Alaska selling Alaskan-made goods. And then there's the usual uh, Diamonds International, the Tanzanite, you know, the uh, cruise line affiliated uh, stores as well. And there are some amazing things if you get out and shop in some of the local stores. Now, for me, one of my favorite things to do is uh, check out the food scene in various towns. And in Skagway, you've got a, a variety of choices. Again, it's a small town, so there's not hundreds of restaurants, but th- there are quite a few restaurants. A lot of them uh, feature uh, food based on uh, what they can catch there. So you tend to find a lot of salmon and those kinds of things. Uh, There are, uh, interestingly enough, a Thai restaurant that gets really good reviews and a Mexican restaurant. And in association with that, if if you get thirsty easily, uh, there's a variety of uh, pubs available and saloons. Uh, Some of them are very much uh, like they were back in the day. And so those are an opportunity and they typically serve, um, you could say, pub grub as well. A lot of people uh, like to do outdoors things in Skagway and it's a great opportunity. Uh, out of Skagway, there are 12 major trails, uh, including the, the Chilkoot Trail, which is 33 miles one way. Now, I'm not thinking that on a typical cruise stop, you have time for that, but there are, are several shorter trails uh, you know, up to half a day that take you up into the mountains, see some of the lakes. So there's some amazing places to go hike if you like to hike. If fishing is more your cup of tea, uh, they do have some great king salmon fishing there. Uh, there's a lot of other water activities. Whale watching is not big in there, though they do have some transient orcas that move through occasionally. But there's a lot of things that you can see uh, from the water in Skagway. So uh, the last thing we'll talk about from Skagway is actually not in Skagway, but it's the trip into the Yukon Territory. Now you can make that trip on the train. There are tour guides or you can rent a car and drive in. But there are some amazing things to see in the Yukon, including the world's smallest desert, the Carcross Desert, um, about a mile square, but it looks like the desert you've seen other places. Uh, There's also uh, one of the more photographed lakes in Canada, Uh, Emerald Lake, and it is absolutely stunning. Just a quick uh, credit, uh, uh, the the Street View pictures that you saw as we started this segment, uh, those are courtesy of Google Street View. Uh, The maps that you saw and satellite views are are courtesy of Google as well. And then uh, the historic buildings are courtesy of the National Park Service. So if you're interested in more information about the White Pass Railway, Uh, I'm going to have an interview with uh, Jackie Taylor. There's a link to it right here. And we're going to talk about the history of the railroad a little more. We'll talk about uh, what you can see on the train ride. And uh, I think we've got some video we're going to share. And click on the link. That'll take you to that interview. We'll see you next time.